What's good everybody? My name is Nista here and welcome back to Incredibox. Today I am here with Corrupt Box version 3, the final chapter, Infected War, by the homeboy aka Luke. Now, this is one of the most anticipated, most hyped up things of all damn time. It's like an Orneo kind of spinoff. Already it's got the mass appeal of the Orneo type of series type of shit, but now with its own lore and its own story, and apparently this is going to be the final chapter, which me personally, I don't really believe that this is going to be the final chapter just because of how big of a deal it really is to a lot of people, but this one is a huge deal with a bunch of lore, a bunch of descriptions, bro. We got some all kinds of crazy shit in the mix. There are actually eight characters in this. Like, there is eight bitches to mess with instead of the usual seven. Not only that, but there's also four additional sounds that are just part of the mix. We do got some other stuff up here. I don't know if these are gonna be cutscenes or more secret characters, but there's a lot of shit to discuss in this one, bro, so let's just get straight into this and not waste any time. This is gonna be a long one, so grab some popcorn, grab some the fucking, I don't know, Mountain Dew maybe, and just, let's just game, bro. Let's just game. I haven't had Mountain Dew in like seven years now that I really think about it. Yeah, let's go! Holy shit. All right, lads. Just already off the gate, we're just going nutty mode on him. Also, wait a minute. Is that the fucking... Wait, no, that's... Wait, hang on. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. That sounds insanely familiar. Is that the sound... Is that the song that plays when Jake teaches those little bugs how to dance? Let me show you how it's done. Is that what that is? There's no way in hell he just took that from Adventure Time. There's no shot. Max got corrupted, slipped, and cracked his face open, making a gaping hole, and then got up and started stumbling around. I just did a quick glance down and I saw my name. Now I'm scared. He was found standing there, watching Neister's family- <gasps> Oh, this is the dude! This is the boy of the hour! This is the guy who was looking at my fucking phone wife and child! He was found standing there, watching Neister's family through a window before walking off and ignoring them. So what was the point? His presence was enough to warn the whole family about the dangers at the area. Okay, that's fair. Later, corrupted Max encountered Neister's family again and ends up taking the two buckshots to the torso. Oh, oh shit. I read that completely wrong. I thought it said taking the two buckshots to the torso. I was like, what the fuck does that mean? Like the, like the nickname for the family or the buckshot. Like what? He ended up taking two buckshots to the torso and what was left of the face before death to these wounds on the ground. Very nice. This guy is all kinds of wholesome. So the, uh, the the secret character uh, that we have been uh, anticipating for this, you know, a good while now, uh, just ignored them, walked away, and then just got shot in the fucking teeth, bro. All right, so that, that's that's great. How well do you work with this guy? Surely, like, not at all, right? Ooh, I like that. I like that pitch change. Oh, that's kind of nice. Holy hell! Bro, that first beat's like six dudes all on his own. All right, main man Clicker formed a day ago. Gender non-corrupted creature. Great. Creature is one of the creations made entirely out of the corrupted fluid with need of a human host. Yes. While stuck to the ground and not aggressive, the moment it sees you in its radius, it will blink, making a clicking sound that alerts a huge load of corrupted life of your presence in a radius of 20 miles. Holy shit, this guy's overpowered as far. Luckily, Clicker is easy to kill. Never mind. As proven by how it was sniped by Lilac. Wait, so Lilac is just out here murking bitches? Is that a rebrand? Is she a character in this? Surely, right? I mean, like, she, she was in the last game's lore, and she's already been the response of fucking two bitches, so if Lilac is not in this, then I will be damn shocked. The facility workers and staff decided to give the corrupted creatures made purely of the liquid their own names to identify them. They named this one Clicker because of the clicking sound it makes when alerted. Very nice, very nice. I mean, TBH, the fuck else are you gonna call it? Who is this fucking dweeb? It's the heat miser. Wait, are you just like a bit crush noise? Kinda. He's like the first one, but terrible. <laughs> 16, oh shit. While everyone was gearing up, Christian was troubled. He didn't have an arm, so how can he defend himself? Luckily, Dane thought of that too, and installed a robot arm. Even if Dame had to cut off the rest of- This is- this is actually fucked up. Like, this is actually absurd. To actually attach the robot one, Dave- e Could you imagine that? Without um, the imagination of, like, surgeries and shit, imagine if, like, halfway up your forearm, it just got completely just blown off. And they were just like, yeah, but if you want an actual new guy, 
you gotta take the rest of it too, asshole. Like, just be like, dude, at that point, just kill me, man. <laughs> Dave even gave him a metal pipe to try out his new arm. It felt tingly at first. Hmm, he has tingly sensations all up along the arm. But after some time, Christian got used to it. He has two arms again, and now he can easily go on a whacking spree. Sweet! Man out here killing it. Also, question for y'all, what is this design? Like, what are- are these just buttons? <laughs> is my man just wearing a plain shirt? That just has three buttons going down it. Is that what that is? <laughs> Please describe what the hell these circles are meant to represent, lad. I would love to know. Oh, it's the main man. God, my man is strapped to the teeth. But how does he fare? I am so positive that's the Jake Dog song. It's gotta be. Shane Levian, the main man himself. The corrupted fluid situation has toughened him a lot. Even as a new facility's new owner, now he is colder than before. And despite how generous he was when the drop of the corrupted liquid touched Christian, that's it. That's the last time he'd save someone from being corrupted. And now if he sees the liquid touch someone, that someone will be kerplungled dead without no hesitation. He takes his leadership of the facility seriously and will do anything he can for human survival. Very nice. But if someone is injured and not corrupted he doesn't mind helping them and giving them prosthetics for broken body parts very nice okay so this guy's just an overall chad like that's might as well just call him chad levia that was a horrible joke and i'm going to quit my life at the end of this oh shit Ooh, that's a hard noise you know that's a hard noise you know Oh, yes. It, oh, my God. I need more people to hear this hard noise. Yes. Oh, if you're watching this, show this to somebody. Show this to you like your cousin or like your mom or your dad or your significant other and just go, God, look at this hard noise. Oh, just show them this. And if their response to you showing them is not, oh, that's hard ass noise, then they're fake. Alright lads, every beat together! Every beat together! Yes, not you bitch! Let's go! This is a mess! Failed test after failed test after failed test, yes. Nothing was working, and it's most likely because Corrupted Lyle refused to get through to all the experiments. Eventually, the workers began getting fed up with him and found no point in experimenting for a cure if their subject is gonna be like this. So he's just a defiant little asshole. So they just decided to give up and let him dr uh, uh, let him, uh, um, um, uh, poop in a containment tank full of water. Staff and hazmat suits picked him up and put him in one, and he just kept banging. Ooh, what kind of banging? Ooh, shit. Eventually, the banging stopped, and he's finally kerplungled. Oh, my days. That's actually kind of morbid as shit, to be honest. Like, that's actually kind of dark as fuck. Okay, so is this guy going to be beat six, or is he just going to be, like, effect one, and then over here is going to be, like, all the crazy bonus twos? Let's see. Fun. That's a beat all damn day. If this bitch says effect one, I'm going to sue. My God. Just a creepy Spider-Man hanging from the ceiling. Honest to God, you know what he kind of looks like? I don't know why, but... Fuck, he's too damn loud for me to talk over him, bro. But, like, his head mixed with the body, not counting the, like, arm things, just his head and body, it kind of looks identical to Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh. Yep, beat six. I'll be damned. Joel Harper. <laughs> we tried our best to save him. It isn't his fault this happened. Sorry, Joel. Sweet! Yeah, this one's great. This one's wholesome. I love this one. This one isn't fucking terrifying. Okay, now we can do every actual beat together. This is gonna be just a mess of nothing. That's all this is gonna be. This is ass! Oh, shit. Oh, wait a minute. Hang on a second. Yo, wait. Oh, no, 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 lads. Yeah, what's, what's, what's going on? My boys, wait. Li listen to this. Listen to this. Holy shit, this guy has a fucking thesis statement as his damn thing. Man, man, Chuck Terrell, very nice. Chuck Terrell went to the facility because he... <laughs> 
Chuck Carroll went to the facility because he wanted to visit his friend who works there. Chuck Carroll found the facility, but eerily, there was nobody at the front preventing him. Having a bad feeling about this, he runs into the facility and checks on his friend he wanted to visit and check if he's alright. Chuck Carroll is worried sick. The moment he finally found some workers in the facility, he is told to stay exactly where he is. Suddenly, some corrupted appeared out of nowhere and lunged at him, scaring him off. He gets chased into a closet where there was nowhere left to run. He tried to lock the door, but the corrupted person burst through it, and in the process, knocking a light bulb from the ceiling onto Chuck Cheryl's head. So Chuck Cheryl <laughs> gets both corrupted, and he has a broken light bulb constantly electrocuting his head. That's so fun. Later on, Dane encounters him and poops him in the head right in front of the man Chuck Cheryl was originally best friends with. That is some bullshit. But it was all worth it because his kerplungle and his demise led to one of the most juiciest sounds of all. Oh boy, can I fuck with that? Oh, we got Mr. King! Mr. King! Oh boy! You are just a horrifying sound. This guy's so ominous and evil, bro. He has such a force with him wherever he goes! The main man, King Ekyala! So I found out that afterwards, as I was editing, that I accidentally called this whole, like, species of alien Octoloids. For some reason, I don't know, just got Splatoon on the mind, still do. Kinda might play it after I record this, not too sure, nothing is fact yet. But honestly, for the joke of it, I'm just gonna keep calling him an Octoloid because it has to piss somebody off and I take pride in that, so let's do it. So after meeting the humans and understanding their situation, <laughs> King <laughs> <laughs> King Ecula has agreed to help fight with the humans, yes. and even bring some Octoloids to help too. It may not be an easy mission, but meeting humans like this is a rare for- it, it, Shit, it's rare for a regular Octoloid! So helping out a human would feel like an accomplishment. I also just hit the mic with my massive fat dong. So he grabbed his staff and asked for Octoloid volunteers. Soon enough, a good handful of Octoloids, including Tarsh and Oskil, to help the humans with the corrupted fluid issue. Also his daughter, Lena wanted to come to, Ecula said yes, what a horrible dad, but being concerned for her safety, he said she isn't allowed to fight with them, never mind, he's a good dad, only watch. <laughs> You have to watch the war. Dude, imagine that. Imagine being like fucking Vietnam and some soldier is like, you want to come with little Tommy? You can't join us, but you can watch. That's still a horrible parent thing to do. Like, imagine that. Imagine bringing your child to a bloodshed, you know? Just just a casual Tuesday relaxation time. Okay, who, who's next? Oh, shit! Whoa, holy fuck. Good lord, he's so loud! Why is he so damn loud? Is that how people feel about me? Neister 24, I know I'm off by two, but I can't age the character backwards after one and two. You know what? That's fair. Holy shit, there are so many words on this damn thing. This is what I find kind of funny about uh, the Corrupt Box is the fact that like, all of the lores are like these massive ass stories. Like, look how many words are here! After seeing Max out the window, Neeser knew exactly what was gonna happen. Just from that encounter, he knows the house isn't as safe. So he gives a few things to his family that can be used as weapons at least, and says this place isn't safe. Lilac and the kids, oh kids plural, no shit, so it's not just fucking Nelak chilling here. Lilac and the kids go with what he's doing. Neeser decides to have him and his family go on a search for somewhere safer, while armed with what they currently have. Eventually, they find an abandoned gun store, with the store clerk uh, kerplungled on the floor. Since it's abandoned, Neister and his family are able to collect whatever's in it while being on the lookout for anyone corrupted. They take what they can find most useful. Nilak grabs a katana, Lilac grabs a sniper, Leister grabs a pistol, and Nilak grabs a metal bag. Yo, the whole family is strapped to the damn teeth, bro. Now we just gotta wait for the damn fan art. Neister just grabs what he's most used to, a shouty. This time being a spaz 12. They then head out now that they have more defense and find the exact facility Neister was in before under a complete war with the infected. Oh, so they didn't even wait for us. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So is like the war currently going on right now and then we show up with a bunch of cool shit? Like, are we Lucifer right now in the fucking has-been hotel ending? Neister himself was reluctant to join them at first, but since Patrick's gone, he figured, why not? Why not is because you have a family. That's why not, you fucking blonde dipshit. Oh shit! Oh dude, that's fire! Dude, knowing the context of like the story and stuff, and then hearing this sound is actually the most hype thing of all time. 
Oh, that's beautiful. Model F88 built two weeks ago. Gender. Oh, just a siren that's set off at the facility whenever there's a breach or an, inst or an intrusion. Nowadays, the facility's main building is used as a hideout, and this siren is used when the corrupted victim is found stumbling outside. Good lord. Imagine that, though. Imagine you got, like, some creepy zombie-looking thing out there, and you hear this. Mad horrifying. Oh, shit! Good God, it's so loud, dude. Man, man, Luke, bro, if you're listening to this, can you just go back to the files for me and just go to everybody's volume and just tone it down just a tad, please? That'd be really, really cool. I was gonna say, is this the first guy of, like, the little octoloid dudes who have been corrupted? Shut the fuck, that scared the hell out of me, holy hell. Oh, this is main man Oskel himself. Or it's probably, it's probably pronounced Ossel. <laughs> I don't care. One of the octoloids that wanted to help the humans with their problems, he found how easily a corrupted being can be killed, and thought this mission would be easy, and he didn't have to worry. He was calm and laid back while fighting them. How the hell you do that? Maybe that's how Alistair fought Adam in the ending of Has Been. I'm sorry, I'm just so addicted to that fucking show right now, I can't stop thinking about it. He was calm and laid back while fighting them, until a tall and fast corrupted monster snatched him, corrupting him and ripping a horn off. Ooh, that is actually fucked up. That's metal as hell, honestly. That's metal as hell, honestly. Corrupted Octoloids are a real first, but that doesn't mean anyone hesitated to take care of Ossel. He later- oh shit. Okay, great. That one's uh, that one's a fun one. I was gonna say, is that the first time? I think that's the first time that one of those little alien dudes got fucked up. How about that? Bro, you gotta stop with these damn sounds loud. I gotta, like, turn it down myself and post, bro, because that is the most loud shit of all time. I gotta, like, take my headphones half off to hear this dude. Is that all it is? I mean, I like the rhythm of it. Very nice. Let's just do some chaotic dumb shit. Let's just have every effect together. This is gonna be hell. God, I'm not ready for this. All right, let's go. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Oh, I'm cringing and not in a good way. Honest to God, man, I'm sorry to tell you this, but so far, at least, the the from, from a music standpoint, this is kind of really... Eh, oh, I'm not too sure about that. Like... Every single sound so far is just kind of a blaring noise and not really, like, an actual beat. Like, I feel like he kind of just wanted to, like, tell... So far, at least, I'm being a complete asshole because we're only halfway done, but... I feel like he just wanted to, like, tell a story and not really make a music game, which is, like, kind of lame. But, so far, I mean, we're, you know, what, 10 dudes? Or, I guess not, no, not 10. I guess we're 12 dudes in now. And, uh, it's just... I mean, I mean it's, the story's cool, but sound effect-wise... There's only like three guys here who are like usable. <laughs> this one was challenging to destroy. It's fast, twitchy, and aggressive like my dick. It's always trying to attack someone. Nobody could ever hit it. Later, this thing was found having a yellow worker. Later, this thing was found having a fellow worker, Joel, wrapped around in the corrupted liquid and hung from the ceiling. That is actually so metal. I love that shit. Trying to devour him whole. That's creepy as hell. For the most part, it was succeeding. Damn, leaving, <laughs> leaving everything below Joel's neck. Nothing Nothing but gooey corrupt and mush. Fucking hell. Hanging from the ceiling. So that's why he looks like Mr. Hanky. It was distracted with its feast. So the workers were able to quickly gun it down before it caused any further damage. It already done enough to Joel. That is some metal shit, bro. I love that guy. Alright, now we got the melodies in quotes. Not too sure if they are gonna be melodies. They're probably just gonna be fucking noises. Alright, let's see. Oh, we got baby girl! Same thing. <laughs> just... Just blaring ass noises. To be fair, it's a horn. And I think horns are badass, but... You know, you kind of need some actual things to kind of balance it out, make the horn cool, but you know, what are you going to do? Does this work with anybody? Hang on. Oh, that's not too bad. Maybe I'm just talking shit too much. I don't know, because this honestly isn't that bad. Let's go. Hey! Okay! Hey! Yes! Not too shabby if I say so myself. Now we got baby girl Lemma, very nice. Man, I wanted to fight with the humans too, but was being concerned for her safety. Her father, King Ecula, didn't let her join the war. However, he did allow her to go into the human room. Just in same place as Emma had everyone who was part of the group. She's 19 as well, you know. <laughs> well, she did grow interest in a few humans. Humans. <laughs> While she did grow interest in a few humans, sometimes watching them when nobody's looking, she unfortunately- Wait, what? Sometimes watching them while nobody's looking? What the fuck? 
does that mean? She unfortunately still is not able to understand them. She wishes to, but she'd have to go to Sefton, who is back at the Octoloid Dimension. So my man Sefton just bailed. He, he said, bitch, I want no part in your little fucking communist party. Ooh, I like this. I like that little rhythm. Oh, I love that. That's great, honestly. I, I, can, I, can, I can dig that. Main man, Spark. <laughs> While the Octoloids went to help the humans, Spark went with Tarsh on his way there, and Tarsh gave him these earmuffs to drown out the loud gunfire. Oh, so they, you know, they're, they're helping out a little man. Little Zeta puppy, little boy. They work, and Spark is able to just chill behind Tarsh as Tarsh fights the corrupted. I love the little face. Look at this, like, yeah. Also, the reason this works is because Zeta puppies like Spark have tiny little ears beneath the layer of their skin on each side. That is horrifying. Hearing everything through the skin protecting them. That is actually so disgusting. I don't even want to think about that. These earmuffs are able to be a big help for Spark as he is sensitive to sounds that are too loud, such as gunfire and shouting. Oh, also, Zeta puppies aren't affected by the corrupted liquid, but Spark is told not to splash around in it since it's a real pain to clean off. Dude, that is honest to God the most flex shit of all time. Dude, after hearing this like fair fluid Oraneo shit for like for so many mods at this point like hearing that this guy is just splashing in it like it means nothing after seeing what it can do to people is honestly the most thug shit of all damn time fucking spark gangster shit it's the fucking dude from express why is every noise so loud and so similar Man. Main man lock the boy himself if there is not something train related in this guy's bio I'm gonna get actually upset while searching for resources Dane and a few other workers find this abandoned train Yep, there it is a tra train slightly covered in corrupted liquid while reluctant You know what does Splatjack think of this because I know that he fucking really does not like Orneo <laughs> So they're just like yep. I mean cuz that's what Express is isn't it? It's like Orneo, but with trains that's a joke. While reluctant, they check out the train for any loot and anything useful. They find Locke, who is corrupted, and ends up by- I thought that said bitching. <laughs> and ends up bitching and corrupting the worker. <laughs> Fuck you, that's my head cannon. That's actually what it says. He ends up bitching and corrupting. Dane and the others immediately opened fire on Locke and the worker he bit. They soon left the train because there was nothing, and they didn't want to risk another worker. That's fair, I guess. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. I mean, it's louder than like a fucking tornado siren, but it is kind of heavy. Oh, this is Tarsh. I forgot. Yeah, this this creepy little night looking bitch is the main man himself. He's the one who's protecting baby boy Spark. Tarsh agrees to help the humans with the other Octoloids fighting and running out of the portal with his spear, prepared to go wild while Spark is on top of his head after giving Spark a pair of earmuffs. After a moment, he sets Spark down, has him follow behind. Oh, shit, dude, you need a comma there, so bad. After a moment, he sets Spark down, has him follow behind him to avoid getting hurt spark does follow him a few times and other times he at least hits am i just like super horrible at reading or is this just like horrible grammar spark does follow him a few times and other times he at least sits somewhere in the background while tarsh is able to see him what the fuck does that mean luckily in this mostly gray and neutral colored environment he can spot spark who is a bright orange very easily dude kiss my fat ass that is so obviously yellow bitch that is like not orange in the slightest Oops, shit! <laughs> well, mystery solved! <laughs> I know who the next one is now. <laughs> Oops, my bad. While everyone else used ranged weapons against the corrupted, even King Ecula fired a laser beam from his staff. That's fucking so heavy. Tarsh commonly just runs with his spear and stabs the corrupted enemies in the head, being careful not to get any of the liquid on him. Luckily, Tarsh has armor and a metal mask for protection, so my man is just steady chilling. He is just steady fucking chilling. All right, now we got baby girl. Oh, I should have seen that. I should have seen the freaking eye. Yeah, no duh. It's gonna be lilac. <laughs> Fucking hell, man. Good lord. Can you just please relax for a second with these noises, bro? Fucking hell. I gotta actually turn my volume down. I genuinely don't want to listen to that because of how loud it is, bro. Man, you gotta come back and fix that, Luke. You, you just gotta. Lilac 44. Ooh, I love her. Oh my god. Look at her. She is just so damn. Oh god. Fuck me. 
On Easter was gone, Lilac was anxious. She didn't know how or why he suddenly just left like that. Nilac offered to go out and look for him. But concerned for Nilac's safety, Lilac- This is such a tongue twister, bro. Lilac told them not to, as she doesn't want them to go missing like Neister did. Luckily, Neister came back, but that was cut short after they were made aware that they had to go. After Lilac and the rest got their weapons from the abandoned store, the family traveled in a small little line with Neister being in front, the kids being in the middle, and Lilac being behind them as she uses the sniper to pick off potential threats ahead. Dude, that's fire as hell. Just like Neister, Lilac is trying so hard to keep the family safe. As there were a few close calls with Neelak, for the most part, the family survived the way through. That is so freaking cool, bro. That's so sick. All right, now we got a music box, which is one of the most just like quiet, chill, good sounding noises of all time. Let's see if this one gets fucked. Loud as shit, but I like it. Still good! I feel like such an asshole for like just being mean and like critiquing. I hate critiquing mods and shit because I just feel like such a dick doing that. But like, like it's super cool that like he gave us eight characters to work with now because I've always said that seven, when, whenever you have like a juice mod, seven sometimes is just too damn little, bro. It just really, really is. But um, in this one, now we do have eight, but I feel kind of bad because like I don't want eight. <laughs> like I. I don't want to listen to any of the guys together because I'm going to blow up my fucking headphones doing that. Timmy Girdle. Is this Timmy the main man that I helped escape in the first one? He doesn't look good. Oh boy. Timmy was found by a worker being surrounded by puddles of corrupted liquid. Didn't he bail through a vent? The worker tries to help him by clearing out some of the puddles and helping him step to the right places without getting corrupted. It worked so well he was almost to safety until Timmy accidentally tripped and landed on the side onto a puddle of the liquid. Seeing this made the worker shed a tear. Isn't he 12? Yeah, he is 12. <laughs> he knows what must be done, but he doesn't have the strength to... Okay, I can't even say that even if I wanted to. Timmy got up and began twitching. The worker closed his eyes and looked away, aiming... Okay, yes, sweet dot 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 as well. That's fucked up. After finally mercy shitting the kid, uh, the worker requested his name never be mentioned in these documents under pure guilt of having to... Okay, well, you already fucked that for starters. So, like, what's the deal here? I mean, just like, why did they have to bring him back at all? God forbid that it had any kind of a happy ending with anyone. Like, you're telling me that I helped out this little Timmy kid for, like, the entirety of the first one, and then he just gets topped off like I said? He tripped and fell. My man got kerplungled by tripping and falling. A quick stumble. A fucking rock is what did it. Are you nuts? Dude, if you're gonna take out, like, the coolest kid on Earth, bro, then you gotta at least, like, get him out in, like, a badass way. Like a sacrifice or something like that. Not just, my man stumbled. <laughs> That's just mega disrespect. <laughs> Alright, now we got every melody together. Let's, let's go through this hell together. <laughs> Fucking hell, we got one dude in this and it's already crazier than sin. <laughs> I can't, no, I really can't, dude. I actually cannot listen. That is so fucking loud, bro. Holy shit. Dude, you gotta come through and, like, fix this, man. I, I, ah. Uh. Is it that loud, like, in the recording? I don't know. Because even then, if it's not, then I can, like, you know, change it a little bit in post. But, like, dude, you gotta come back and fix this because it genuinely makes the whole music side of it, like, genuinely unplayable. <laughs> Did you have to add that fucking little noise at the end, bro? Uh, I want to listen to that to like see what he's like saying and like reading and shit, but <laughs> I don't, don't want to listen to it. It's too loud. I'm sorry. Am I a dick for saying that? I don't know, man. I just I don't want to listen to it at all. All right, Matthew Gritz. I just read the very bottom for some reason that Neister was so proud. What the hell happened? A few weeks after being corrupted, Matthew Gritz broke out of a cell that his consciousness asked to be locked in. What? He roams around and acts aggressive while loudly shouting these weird noises. Neister's family encounters him and Neister's was gonna blow his bra- Damn, yo, shit! But Neelak wanted- Oh, Neelak wanted some fire too? What? Were you out of your mind? So Neelak pulled out the katana they got from the weapon store and chopped them off. Yeah, Neister was so proud. That's, uh... Yeah, that is all kinds of deranged. All right, now I got the next guy. Please be something not eardrum blasting. That'd be kind of cool. Hooray! We have someone I can hear. Okay, cool. Okay. Kind of heavy, honestly. Oh, shit. I thought those were like tears in her shirt. No, that's like, that's through her ass. 
Oh, I'll be damned. You know, that's actually kind of nutty mode on him. All right, what we got? Uh, Sally Levenslin. After being locked in a containment cell for so long, not only prevents aggressive problems, but also prevents any interruptions for the corrupted fluid to dissolve her faster. Dissolve. Referring to a human as dissolving is the most mentally terrifying thing I've ever heard in my life. Starting from where she was touched by the fluid and working its way all over. That's fucked. Later, she finally gets kerplungled after her brain is consumed by the liquid and she collapses right there in the middle of her containment cell. All right, cool. This one is uh, all kinds of wholesome and fun. This is very, very nice. Can we have just like something just like fun after this? Like, like I'm, I'm, I'm getting like so mentally uh, just obliterated from all these like scary things. Like, can the next character just be just fucking, I don't know, Lego Batman Killer Moth? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, thank God we got some color, and then as I was thinking that, the guy just blasted my ears out again. He stole Tord's hoodie. <laughs> Give it back! Luke! The homeboy Lukey- Wait, is this the guy himself? No way in hell this is a freaking self-insert. I'll be damned, this is literally the creator. Pretty interesting, I'm okay with that. Of course, he ain't gone. <laughs> oh, hey, it's me. Guess I didn't need an Easter for my own backst- What? What the hell does that mean? Oh, hey, it's me. Guess I didn't need an Easter for my own What the fuck does that even mean? What did you need me for? Anyways, I saw on the news about the corrupted outbreak and stocked up, aiming myself with an Uzi. I was originally just gonna use for home defense until I fell down the stairs and fractured my jaw. So you're not even involved in this and you're already getting blown to hell. I was left there screaming and crying. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just, I'm sorry, it's just kind of, so his man really just chilling at home, fell down the stairs, and was like, yep, that's it. <laughs> I was left there screaming and crying in pain. Luckily, a man named Dave Levian rushed to help me and gave me his first- What are you talking about? Where is this at? Arming myself with an Uzi, I was originally just going to use for home defense until I fell down the stairs and fractured my jaw. That means that he got this Uzi from his home and then fell down the stairs and fractured his jaw. So why the fuck would main man Dane just go to some random dude's fucking suburban house and just be like, I heard your calls while a war is breaking out. That didn't make any sense. It's detachable in case I need to eat or drink something, and it helps me speak more fluently than well I had the than well if I had the jaw fractured. Even has a cool voice filter on it. This guy just makes no sense. Just from a story standpoint, I don't get this one at all. I kind of feel bad. I've been I've, I've been super negative so far with this, and I really hate being like that. But I don't know. It's just I don't get this. You know what I mean? Like I don't know. Like Corrupt Box One and Two was like really really cool just because like it had bumping tunes to it, and it like really gave you a story that you're like hyper interested in. This one, the sounds effect, the, the whole music side of it is just fucking unusable until he changes volume stuff. And then even from a story standpoint, I'm not really feeling it either because, first of all, this guy alone doesn't even make any sense. Like, it's cool that he has, like, a self-insert. That's fine. You know, hey, do it every once. Your thing, go nuts, man. Be a badass. I don't care. But, like, this has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> Yet, one of the main characters just knows of this thing going on. It's just, I, I don't know. From a lore standpoint, I just don't see this making that much sense. Now we got Toby from Paranormal Activity. Very nice. Oh shit! Oh! oh. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> Dude, I just completely fucking left the game. Tall man. Even if it isn't the only being made purely out of the corrupted juice anymore, it's still deadly. It runs like hell, and despite being deaf, the moment it sees you, it can catch on memory of where you were last. Bro, this guy is OP as hell. Put him in Smash Bros. Luckily, this thing was distracted with obstacles, so they took the chance to open fire on it. King Ecula managed to make short work of this thing by shooting a beam at it with his staff. This tall freak may be gone, but that doesn't mean everyone's safe. Now that they have an entirely different beast with nearly the same height. Wait, so we got another boy in the mix? Another one made entirely out of feral fluid? And is it this boy, I'm guessing? Oh, shit. Huh. My man is pulsating. That is horrifying. Yes. Very nice. Even it has like one of the Octolord's eyes because they have like little triangle eyes, don't they? They do. 
Oh shit, that's a neat little attention to detail. Is this like everybody that it's corrupted in one mass? Like the blob from FNAF? Dude, that'd be crazy. Please. Oh, it's all got like a gradient too with it. The homeboy juggernaut. Good God. Nobody knows where this thing came from, but it's somehow worse than Tall Man. Not only can it hear and see very clearly, it's also incredibly resistant. Bullets and shotgun shells do not phase it, and it's hard to overwhelm. It just came in and began wreaking havoc. It just effortlessly throws around workers, corrupting them, and some didn't even get corrupted. They just got kaplungled. This thing is just a whole riot on its own and doesn't help that the survivors keep mostly being occupied with hordes of the corrupted humans. It's really incredible how things can get out of hand that quickly. I mean, just gotta be honest, I, I'm not sure if incredible would be the best word. It's totally stellar how horrible things got. One worker had a plan to fill a building with explosive and lead this thing into it, but that is the same worker who was deemed many times as the least sane worker in the facility. So everybody is unsurprisingly reluctant on the idea. But there is no better option. Dane just said, screw it. Why not? It's our only hope anyway. So did it work? Does it not even say if it worked? Because that's the last guy. Bro, that's ass. Hang on, maybe some like bonus things up top, dude. Okay, so we got freaking, this is going to be ass. I don't want to listen to these people together. Okay, three, four, stop. All right, four, five. Shit, this is hell. Okay, four, six, seven. Oh god, alright, light bulb bad. Light bulb is not that bad. Shit. 8, 9, 10, 11. Alright, you're good. 22 and 23. Alright. Fucking hell! Alright, photographs unlocked. Oh, look at this. This is fun. Oh my god, more reading. Fuck! While Patrick was still alive, he kept telling all the workers not to enter one specific room, which is closed with a metal blast door. Now that he's gone, Dane and Christian began getting a bit curious on why Patrick Averace was so insistent on keeping this room from everyone. They think based on Patrick's actions while he was alive, whatever he's keeping in here can't be the worst thing, right? So they open up and investigate. The room smelled awful, and Dane had to get a flashlight just to see in here. They find this decaying lifeless skeleton sitting in the room. They find the skeleton also has a wallet. It has no clothes, but it has a wallet. So Dane and Christian check the ID that's in the wallet. Turns out it's Peter Phil, a worker that has gone missing for a long time. Dane checks his pulse. What do you mean checks his pulse? It's a fucking skeleton, you dipshit. What are you on about checks his pulse? Look at this fucking thing. You're gonna check his pulse. He's gone. No shit. Chuck, Kara, and Jeffrey were two best buds. This is the last selfie they took together before everything went to shit. Jeffrey had to learn the hard way that maybe being a facility worker isn't as cool as it sounded. The time Chuck Charles' friend checked on him, Chuck Carroll was attacked and kerplungled, leaving Jeffrey at a permanent mental damage state. This is just fucking depressing as hell. Photograph three. Six years before the corrupted fluid even existed, Patrick was arrested once. Of course, the guy that was his right hand man at the time, Anthony, bailed him out. This was Patrick's mug shot in the past. Looks like a neat little boy, but he's actually a piece of shit. Photograph four. Hey, this isn't so bad. These guys are actually easy to get. Oscar's last words. That's just disrespectful. That one's just fucking disrespectful, bro. All right, lads. Now we got more bonuses. Fuck. Nine. Twenty-four. Shit. Twenty-four, twenty-three, twenty-two, twenty-one. 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Go up there, you piece of shit. Go. Fuck. There's so much reading. <laughs> After finishing off the remaining hordes of corrupted victims that were occupying them, the workers decide to try out the building explosion idea for the juggernaut. Okay, so at least it's the ending, you know what I mean? Watch it be bullshit. It's not even going to end in a happy way, is it? Who, at least by the looks of it, is the last remaining threat from the corrupted liquid. They sent Christian to scout for the building, and in under four minutes, Christian finds a shack. So the workers carry barrels of flammable gasoline, as well as propane tanks, oil cans, and dynamite. Don't ask why they had dynamite, bro. They have fucking otherworldly beasts running around and you're asking why they have dynamite they throw one end of the rope in the shack and hold the other 50 meters away from it as dane shoots at juggernaut to get its attention he does and it runs after him so dane quickly runs to the shack of explosives waits until the beast is right behind him and turns around to run and lock the door after dane runs out to the others he grabs a lighter and watches the rope turn into a trail of fire leading towards the shack of explosives that juggernaut is trapped in a big loud explosion happens as the large corrupted monster is finally gone with the biggest threat from the 
the corrupted fluid gone, they take out any remaining corrupted beings and relieve themselves from all the stress. Okay, so they're good, right? For celebration, they decided to take Patrick... <laughs> wow, they decided to take Patrick's shit from the attic, which nobody knows why they just kept it. So that's a whole fucking thing on its own. And tied it to a wooden pole with a rope attached. Dane decides to toss the lighter to Neister, who has originally kerplungled Patrick, and let him light the corpse and truly end this all. Good God, man. So, oh, this is just so much information, bro. And it's just dark as shit. Oh, shit, there's a cutscene. Oh, fuck. Hey, look, you got Neelak. Oh, yeah, she wasn't in this. Well, guys, we did it. Oh, I forgot I did that, didn't I? Oh, shit. It's kind of cool though that it has like actual like things to it. Look at that. No, I forgot I did the damn. <laughs> I forgot I did that little voice acting thing. Man, that's cringe. <laughs> I did that a long time ago. I forgot all about that, honestly. I genuinely forgot that that was for corrupt. <laughs> all right, my boys. So, final thoughts right here. Um,. I'm not too sure that like yeah, it's cool and you know it has an actual ending and it has a good story There's not like some bullshit ass cliffhanger that'll never get resolved. So that's definitely a plus But oh god, I feel so bad like Luke if you're watching this man I'm so sorry, bro, but like I'm not really the big fan of this mod I don't know if that's like me being an asshole because every time I say I don't like a mod I get fucking crucified for it, but I don't know man this was, ah. It was easily like the weakest of the three by like a landslide and just I don't know I just feel like everything was just kind of undercooked with this one Like I was really really hyped for this like this is something that I was like super excited looking forward to the whole bit But honestly, I just think that it was handled really not in the best way of all time from a music standpoint like, I don't like it at all. Like, really at all. Just because it fucking hurts to listen to. Like, you have to turn your volume so far down to even hear it. And not only that, but every noise just sounds kind of samey. Like, with the exception, like, the music box and I think the female alien. I don't even, I could be wrong with that as well. But everybody just felt like the same exact kind of just like... <laughs> Like, I didn't really feel like there was any kind of variety in the sounds. All of them are just blastingly loud to the point where you can't even, like... Like, if you have more than three dudes up there, it sounds miserable. And that's, like, uh, that's definitely a diss. But not only that, but I feel like the story as well just had too much in it. Like, it, it really wasn't, like, a cohesive narrative thing. It really just felt like just... He kind of just made it up on the fly. And that's kind of not really the most fun thing of all time. It is super cool, though, that there was, like, a self-insert with the creator and all that but at the same time though it had nothing to do with the fucking story and literally made no sense the guy is in his house he sees that this crazy bullshit's going on somewhere he goes and grabs a gun falls downstairs and then this main ass character who is currently fighting in a war just knows that this random stranger took a tumble and helps him what fucking sense does that make? And like, I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. This didn't really feel like an Incredibox mod. It just kind of felt like a book with ear grape. <laughs> There's a little hint for you. It just, it just feels like that. Just base boosted shit. This is without a doubt the least good of the three. And to be fair, I'm not really a fan of this kind of at all. I, I, I hate saying that because I feel like such a dick, but I don't know. I just feel like the other two first mods just did everything in spades and just did it so well and so cleanly that this one just kind of felt... I, I, I don't want to be an ass, but it kind of just was boring. I mean, just like I wasn't really excited. I wasn't hype at all for like what was going on. I just like the Neister family stuff was kind of cool, but everything aside from that, I just... I don't know. I felt like I wanted more out of this. The music was borderline unusable and the freaking stories were just... They're, there was just too much said. I kind of somewhat do highly doubt that this is going to be the last of the chapters. Like, it obviously ends in this kind of way, but I don't know. If there were to be, like, an, like, a Corrupt Box 4, it really wouldn't shock me that much. And you can easily make, like, a prequel story out of it with, like, the fucking Patrick from back in the day. Easy peasy, but I don't know. This is this kind of... Oh, especially Timmy! Holy shit, I didn't think about Timmy! Like, that was, Timmy was one of, like, the coolest characters from, like, the first one. And then he's just, like, killed off in the most, like, disrespectful way possible in this one. What did you gain by doing that? Just, like, I don't know. What are the thoughts? Am I just being, like, an overhating asshole? Or is this just actually, like, the weakest of the three? I'm not too sure. Let me know down below. So, I'm ending off right here. So, if you enjoyed this kind of content, then the buttons are down there. You know what to do. And uh, have a good one. So, goodbye. See ya!